I wanted to create a video that gives you all the things that can block nutrients in your body, okay? And here's 10 of them, starting with number one, low stomach acids. First of all, how do you know if you have low stomach acids? Well, do you have indigestion, heartburn, bloating when you eat, GERD? You don't have enough stomach acid. As we get older, we lose our stomach acid. Um, that's why apple cider vinegar is very important. Um, you're not going to be able to digest protein that well, especially absorbing amino acids. So that's one thing. And minerals. Minerals need an acidic stomach to, to be able to absorb, especially iron and calcium, magnesium. So without an acid stomach, you're not going to pull in minerals and trace minerals, okay? So that's one. Number two, low bile. If you don't have a gallbladder, if you have a gallbladder congestion, if you have bloating, any issues with your gallbladder because you don't have enough bile, then you're not going to be able to emulsify and break down those fats and pull them into your body. So you'll be deficient in the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A for the eyes, uh, D, E, and K2. So you can have problems with any of those. Uh, next one, number three, insulin resistance. I've created a lot of videos on this um, because this insulin controls the absorption of certain nutrients, uh, especially potassium, magnesium, protein, and other nutrients, okay, but primarily potassium and amino acids, so you'll have a hard time absorbing uh, potassium. I'm going to do a whole video just on that, but that's why diabetics, for example, are very low in potassium and high in sodium. It's one of the reasons why they have high blood pressure, um, but the other thing is they have a lot of muscle loss and loss of collagen, joint issues, inflammation, because they're not pulling the amino acids in there, so they don't, they're not as strong. And then number four, elemental minerals. So when you're taking a supplement and you're reading the label and it says calcium carbonate, that's an element. That's like a rock. Elements are like rocks. So when you take vitamins that are like rock-based, they're not going to absorb nearly as well as plant-based minerals. Okay, so definitely if the vitamin is like a paperweight, it's really heavy, and um, chances are it has calcium carbonate in it, don't recommend it. Um, but that would be very poor absorption, all right? Number five, synthetic vitamins. Synthetic vitamins are not the same as natural vitamins. They're not in the same complex. And I even like to take it one step further to, uh, than just natural vitamins. Get vitamins as their whole complex, as a food-based type vitamin. That's what I recommend. Now, if you're doing some cleanse or detox, you can use synthetic vitamins. And natural are much better, but the food-based ones are even better. Um, especially when you get uh, the synthetic antioxidants. They can create a lot of problems. Uh, some of the top-selling vitamins on the planet are all synthetic. They're really cheap, and uh, they kind of go right through you. Uh, that's why the urine is very bright orange and yellow with the B vitamins, because the synthetics, the body is rejecting it. Uh, okay, number six, antibiotics destroy the flora, the good bacteria, so you're going to have a hard time assimilating nutrients as well. Uh, also, your pH in your colon is going to be altered, and you need that, uh, that, that acidic um, large bowel to uh, pull in certain nutrients and help you digest. So without that, you're going to have a problem. Number seven, low-fat diets. Fat-soluble vitamins are in fatty foods, so if you're low-fat, you're going to be missing vitamin A, D, E and K, okay? Number eight, vegan diets. Now, it's very difficult to get certain nutrients if you're a vegan. Number one, B12, an active form of vitamin A, like retinol, because that's mainly in animal products, and vitamin K2, unless you're taking something called NATO, which you can get uh, K2 in, that's a, a fermented soy product. But recently, I um, did analysis on my wheatgrass juice powder, because I wanted to see the nutrition in there, and I'm looking through the vitamins and minerals, and I happened to notice something. I thought it was a mistake. It showed B12 in wheatgrass, and it was actually double the RDA. It was twice as much as it that you would even need. I was actually shocked. I thought there was an error. I called the, um, the farm where I grow it, and I said, have you ever seen this before? And they said that, um, well, naturally, all the grasses in the, um, do not have B12. It's just not in there and that includes chlorella and some of these other things. But where you're getting it from is the, the friendly bacteria that lives within the grass. I found that fascinating. So the bacteria is making the B12. So that was really cool. So now I have um, some proof that there's some B12 in wheatgrass juice powder. Okay, number nine, mineral oil. Don't ever consume mineral oil. So make sure like if you're 
doing some type of product that has mineral oil, don't consume it because it's, it's going to uh, block vitamin A, vitamin D, and kind of wash that out of your liver. It's going to clean it out of your liver, and you're going to end up depleted. So be careful of consuming mineral oil, vitamin D, A, K, and, and uh, E. Okay? And the last one is heat. Anytime you overcook your vegetables, um, cook it for too long, steam it for too long, you're killing off the nutrition. Microwaving it, you're killing off the nutrition. That's why pasteurization, when you can uh, foods or you're pasteurizing certain things, you're killing off the, most of the nutrition in there. So uh, you want to keep it more raw, but that's definitely a factor that can block nutrients. All right? Thanks for watching. Hey, you probably already subscribed, but if you haven't, press this little button down below and I will keep you updated.